So making art is fun, right? It's basically a way for you to splooge all of your brain guts out into the world for everyone to see. But of course, like all things in life, it comes with its fair share of downsides which make us question why we even bothered to pick up a pencil in the first place. In fact, I've had so many instances where I've reconsidered my chosen path of life that I could make an entire video about it. So let's get into it. Your prices are too high, I will pay you in exposure. Ah yes, because if you can't afford a thing, that means the person selling it is charging too much and no one else will ever buy it. Which is why they're a successful artist? If you just woke up and are still having trouble getting your brain to start up, let me explain. Just because you can't afford or wouldn't buy something, doesn't mean that no one else can or would buy that product. And sure, it may be difficult to see why anyone would spend thousands of Urolans on, let's say, collectible socks or potato chips that look like George Washington, but at the same time, other people may have trouble understanding why you pay so much for your gaming PC or football cards or meals at Nando's. Point is, you can't dictate what value something has to anyone other than yourself, especially when money is involved. Like it or not, people can spend their hard-earned cash on whatever they want. So, think an artist's work is too expensive for the quality they're offering? Good for you. Now go find a different artist. It's that simple. No, not like that. Oh my god. Listen, it's true that exposure is helpful to artists who need to get their work out there a little bit more. However, when artists do commissions instead of requests, it's for a reason. If they wanted exposure, they'd be out there drawing fan art or offering to do work for people. So if an artist tosses you their commission sheet when you hit them up, you just gotta deal with it. Heck, even, even most people with large audiences pay for artwork and credit the artist because, guess what? Trying to pay an artist with exposure kinda says to them that their work is not worth the prices they're offering, and that's hella insulting. And let me ask you something, why would they waste their time working for you for free when they've got actual customers willing to pay for it? So take your two subscribers and get out of here! The Spectator Does anyone else get stressed out and completely forget how to use your hands when someone's watching? Most people are fine while watching you work. They keep a fair distance and respect that what you're doing takes a lot of concentration. Other people, however, like to lean in real close so they're basically sitting on you and you can feel their gross, oniony breath so deep in your ear hole that it's coming out the other end. Is that a dog? It's an original character. It's like a mythical creature. Oh, cause... This part kinda looks like a dog. Can you not touch Can you the draw me? Tablet drivers. Or just tablets in general. The graphics tablet is a big slab with a magic pen that allows you to draw directly onto your computer screen and in turn utilize powerful programs to take your illustrations to the next level. Sounds great, doesn't it? Well, it would be if they actually worked. The infamous tablet driver stopped working pop-up plagues digital artists around the globe, among a plethora of other problems such as buttons glitching out, the cable having a shaky contact, or pen pressure just not registering for seemingly no reason whatsoever. I know there are people out there lucky enough to have been blessed with the 1 in 4000 chance of receiving the elusive tablet that works perfectly with no issues at all, but the fact of the matter is, as soon as technology is involved in anything, it takes a miracle for at least one thing not to go wrong. People implying or attaching adult themes to characters that are safe for work. Okay, listen. Chip is a little bit thick, okay? I'm a little chubby IRL so I was like, hey, Let's incorporate this aspect of myself into my character because, let's face it, there's not a whole lot of representation of different body types in the cartoon YouTuber world. Which is fine of course, but it meant that changing up my character's build could make him a little more unique. Plus it's a chubby cat, and what's more cute than that? So I made the change and immediately, immediately, received comments with the implication that Chip ate somebody. Look, you can be into whatever, as long as you're not 
actually eating people alive? I couldn't care less. But when you force these interests of yours onto sweet, innocent, safe for work characters, that is a big yikes for me, my friend. You could tell me that it's not an adult thing. And I'm sure there are plenty of people who enjoy once in a while characters swallowing each other whole in a just friends context. But I'm sorry if my judgement is a little blurred by the oh woes and pet names. The useless critic. We've all heard the quote, you don't have to be a chef to know your food is bad. Which is, of course, very true. Someone who has no experience in illustration and has never even picked up a pencil in their whole life to tell you that that neck of that cute anime boy you drew looks a little too long, or that he actually looks more like a character from a creepypasta from 2007. However, that's just about where it ends. Someone with no knowledge or experience in your area can't go into detail about what exactly is wrong or how to improve it. They can't draw over what the anatomy should look like or suggest a brush that would make lighting look more soft and realistic, for example. Not that this type of criticism is bad, when you've been staring at something for such a long time, sometimes you really can't see the problems with it until you get a fresh pair of eyes to point them out for you. And of course, you're probably not going to be able to find an expert in your field to consult every time you want feedback. What gets under my fear is the people who act like they know what they're talking about, yet dish out advice more useless than a book on how to read. And don't get me started on the people who criticise whips. Disclaimer of course, they can be criticised, I'm just talking about the dumb ones, like, hmm, yeah, it's okay, but it needs colour. Like, boy. That's like tasting someone's pancake batter and saying, hmm, it's tasty, but way too liquid. You should fry it. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna. It's called a work in progress. I even wrote in which colours are gonna go where on the sketch. <laughs> this looks like... You spend ages working on the perfect character design. You're all done and are really proud of it. It's cool and unique and you're immediately attached to it. The time comes to share it with the world and your comments are filled with comparisons to this other more popular character that you've never even heard of. You shrug it off at first since you know that your design has nothing to do with that other one but the comments just keep coming. You start getting called cool a rip off. Eventually you don't even see your own character anymore. So to avoid being seen as an obsessed fan slash ripoff artist, you burn it. Well, it's not that dramatic every time, but boy does this rustle my jimmies. And it's not fun on the other end either. Let's be real for a sec. Ship is not a unique character design. Sure, all of these elements put together make Chip, Chip, but each individual part is not an original idea that no one's ever done before. So why does every two-legged cat Every white furred animal with something red around its neck and every one different coloured eared mammal constantly get compared to Chip. Even my own drawings of other characters get compared to Chip. I think the saddest part about it is I feel like people just don't realise that they're doing any harm. I know there are people who are totally cool with it but some artists find it really disheartening that their design they worked really hard on just makes people think of someone else's character. Not being able to find a tutorial or reference because you don't know what it's called. There comes many situations in which you need to draw something you've never drawn before or don't have enough experience with. So you need to find a reference image of how it looks in order to draw it accurately. Some references are pretty easy to get. For example, if you're drawing a human, you can just do the pose yourself and photograph it. But in other situations, it won't be so easy. Okay, so our main character's addiction to bread is so strong that she started having to go to extreme lengths to get it. In this scene, she takes her trusty 8-month-old baguette and attempts to rub a bakery with it. Okay, how the heck do I draw this? I could use a reference, but I don't even know what I type in. Let's just... Uh, I don't know, woman rubbing bakery with baguette. <laughs> no, no, why would that even exist? Oh. Motivation. Not having the motivation to create for seemingly no reason sucks. But what I hate the most is when this motivation magically reappears when I'm trying to sleep. First of all, I can't sleep because my brain is too excited. But then, when I wake up in the morning, where did it go? Suddenly, I can't be bothered anymore. What the heck? And don't get me started on art block. Getting to work one day and your brain suddenly decides that you don't know how to art anymore. It's always fun trying to figure out what the problem is so you can get back to normal, especially when you have a deadline. 
Oh yeah, Professor, my assignment isn't done yet because I had art block. I physically couldn't work on my project. Oh, art block, you poor thing. Of course I'll give you an extension. Go home at once and take the next two months off school to recover. <sighs> Wouldn't that be nice? Though, imagine how easy it would be to abuse a system like that. Alright, if you think I left anything out, please do let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your own artist horror stories. And if you enjoyed this video and want to hear me complain about more things, I did two other videos about general things I can't stand, or you can check out this playlist for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and have a great day.